Tonight on Would I Lie to You, he hails from Torchwood, it's John Barrowman. He hails from Mr. and Mrs. Wood, it's Dom Wood. And their team captain, Lee Mack. And facing them tonight, she's a mother of two, it's Faye Ripley. He's been drinking since two, it's Patrick McGuinness. And their team captain, David Mitchell. But first, please make some noise, specifically of the excited and welcoming kind, for your host, Edgar Dayton. Thank you, good evening, and welcome to Would I Lie to You, where our panellists have half an hour to prove just how expert they are at barefaced lying. Psychologists have now identified 34 different types of lie, 35 if you include that one, <laughs> and apparently the best way to make sure someone isn't lying to you is to keep constant eye contact, study their body language, and wire their nipples up to 10,000 volts. <laughs> In medieval England, a suspected liar would have to carry a red-hot iron bar for nine paces. If their hands were burned, they were declared a liar and then hanged. Of course, if their hands weren't burnt, they were declared a witch and then hanged. <laughs> and so, against all our better judgments, we start with round one, Home Truths, in which guests read out a statement about themselves. At this point, they've no idea what's written on the card. It might be a true fact or a big fat lie that they'll just have to run with. The opposing team uh, then use all their powers of deduction, or failing that, a lot of random guesswork, to establish if it's the truth or, conversely, not. So, John it is, uh, with our first Home Truth. John? I was caught short in Prince Charles's garden. <laughs> what do you mean, caught short? What does that mean? Are you not familiar with that phrase? Oh. Would Just you like me to elaborate? Please do. Uh, <laughs> yes, within the bounds of BBC viewing, yes. Wee <laughs> wee. Oui, oui. oh, all right. Taking a piss. Yes. <laughs> Got you. Excellent. Why were you in Prince Charles's garden? Um, I. It was uh, a tour. A, t a tour. <laughs> <laughs> Which garden of his? Uh, He's got at, many at, gardens. At right? Highgrove. At Highgrove. The garden yes. at Highgrove. Yes. <laughs> and you were what? What sort of tour? Why I mean, do, you... could I look in the yellow pages? Highgrove has Prince tours. Charles's garden High, tours. Highgrove, has, <laughs> Highgrove has tours. Oh, right, so it's open to the public. Yeah, you have to write and be invited. You have to. <laughs> Right, and oh, anyone you, have to, you have to send off for an invitation. <laughs> well, anyone from the public can write. Dear Charlie, any yes. chance of yeah. a piss in you go? <laughs> <laughs> Does he know, Prince Charles, that you did this? I'm assuming that he might know about it. You, you assume right. that a random uh... tourist pissing in his garden, <laughs> that's going to get back to his <laughs> garden. I actually set the alarm off. What did he say? <laughs> <laughs> Are you, you're just bragging now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> probably weed through a laser beam. <laughs> is there any medical reason why you can't anticipate reason? <laughs> I mean, is that what we're dealing with here? Uh, yeah, I'm incontinent. <laughs> David, we're going to have to rush you for a decision that. here. Right. Well, I'm just, that's a bit odd that you sort of thought... I mean, I'm, I'm sure Prince Charles has got a large garden, but I don't think that would constitute being too far from civilization <laughs> to find a proper loo. Oh, yeah, he's a dirty little liar. So, your team captain, David, you're going to have to make you, a decision. You think, you're going to have to override think you're one of you. the truth. And you don't. I don't. I, I'm, I'm with you. I think, I think that's a lie. OK, they're saying it's a lie. What is the truth, John? The truth is... the story... it's true. Uh, <laughs> hey, nice one. Well, there you are. Yes, it's absolutely true. Uh, John was caught short in Prince Charles's garden. So if you thought your Dutchy original biscuits tasted funny, check where the oats are from. <laughs> of course, uh, John could have just done as Camilla does when she's caught short, lifted her tail and hosed the snails off the path. <laughs> and so, uh, to Paddy for his home truth. I've snogged Paris Hilton. <laughs> well, there is an obvious question that... Yeah. Begs itself. Yeah. How come you ugly get? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Where were you? Uh, at the James Bond premiere. So you snogged Paris Hilton? Yeah. It was at the premiere? Yeah. At the party no, afterwards? No, 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 it, it was, was at the, the premiere. premiere. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a friend of mine, dared me to do it. I went up to her, said hello, and instead of kissing her on the cheek, I went on a lip. Oh, you didn't even ask her, you just lunged in? Yeah. That's confident. <laughs> what, oh, hi. What, that is very confident. What flavour was her lip gloss? 
Uh, if you kissed her, I you'd remember like the flavor. It was just like sticky. I don't know. It wasn't a flavor. <laughs> it was sticky. Sticky. Yeah. It was just. I tell you what. You know all the chat up lines, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks, love. That were right. Sticky. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you're going to have to come up with some kind of an answer, either true or lie. You see, the thing is, I'm from the same part of the world as he's from, and I can believe this is true, because it just saves time, money, expense... <laughs> <laughs> just, just why mess about? I haven't got time for all this, love. Yeah. OK, so you're thinking it's probably true. What do you think, Don? True. Do you reckon? Yeah. What do you think? I'll go with the boys. I'll say true. OK, they're saying it's true. Paddy? Oh, it was a lie! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is a lie. Uh, Paddy has not snogged uh, Paris Hilton, which, if you look at the statistics, is the least probable answer. <laughs> Uh, Paris Hilton, 26, recently likened herself to Marilyn Monroe and Princess Diana, both of whom died sudden deaths at a tragically early age. So, our <laughs> next... <laughs> our uh, next time truth comes from Dom, so uh, fess up, if you would. My nickname at school was Ear Sniffer. <laughs> <laughs> OK, David's team, is this right or rubbish? Uh, was there an incident that uh, sparked this nickname off? Were you caught sniffing someone's ears? I, I think that's the long and short of it, yeah. A girl called Alexandra Westberg, it started off with her, and I got slightly obsessed with her, and then I did that thing, you know, where you get your arm and you, you, you scrape it with a compass until you got their name in blood on your arm. Yeah. And then it goes septic, then it goes green on your arm. But then, yeah, so I sniffed her ear, then it just kind of snowballed. I'm so glad I'm gay because we don't what? do that kind of thing. Oh. <laughs> Please don't go. He was, he was, he was ear sniffer. I was rear sniffer. That was. <laughs> <laughs> um, David, what are we thinking? Uh, well, you've sort of glossed over the actual what? first ear sniffing incident. Yes. Where were you? Were you in a lesson? Orchestra. Orchestra. During orchestra, she played the piccolo. I played the viola, not violin, viola. And uh, hey, she. Hang on, what? You had a pretty tough upbringing. No, it was. <laughs> It was hell. <laughs> I've got to ask a question. Are you Ant or Deck? <laughs> Would it be possible if you could come over here and just show me how the sniff was done on David's ear? <laughs> Can I not just try it on his? Yeah. Or what about John's? Even no. Better. No. No. <laughs> Shit. Shit, no. Go, Shit, no. If I sniff his ear, he's gay. He'll have sex with me. <laughs> Do we want to see him sniff? Yeah! Mm. Well, it's... The people have spoken. It was kind of more of an ear sniffer liquor kind of thing. <laughs> so, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll it's do it. David, that must have helped. Well, I, well it's, it's odd that, considering now you're claiming you licked her ear, why didn't they call you ear licker? I mean, that's, no. a, big, that's a bigger deal than just sniffing. I was at the end of the orchestra, right. they were all around there, and they could only just see the... Not again! The sniff. <laughs> <laughs> On those grounds, you're thinking... I, I think it's a lie. I, I think it's a lie, really. OK. Oh. OK. I'll go with you. Okay. We, right, we think it's a lie. OK, Don. You fools, it is... It's a lie. It's a lie. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. It's going to be well done. <laughs> it's, uh, it's complete rubbish. Uh, Dom's nickname at school was never Ear Sniffer, although I can't help thinking that whoever writes these lies is working through some issues. <laughs> All of which uh, means it's, uh, well, David's team who are throwing down the gauntlet, leading as they are, 3-1. Our next round is and always will be known as the Ring of Truth. In short, our teams will be uh, presented with a celebrity fact or two whose veracity it's then up to them to vouchsafe or poo-poo. Uh, David's team, guess first. So, uh, how true is this? Madonna has her toilet seat removed from every venue she performs at so that no-one sells it on eBay. <laughs> I mean, the thing is that maybe by removing the toilet seats, she's created this sort of mystique. Oh, she has to remove her toilet seats, otherwise people will want to sell them. 
And in reality, no one would want to sell something that her old arse had touched. <laughs> <laughs> and so the toilet seat, when they get taken away, where do they go to? A big toilet seat warehouse. They buy a new seat every time uh, and then throw it away at the end. It's a bit obsessive-compulsive, actually, isn't it? It's like people who keep their Wii in labelled jars. <laughs> Absolutely true. Very obsessive compulsive people can sometimes do that. They sort of, as it were, file their various excreta. <laughs> How would you know? How would I know? About well, filing I... those sorts of well, things. I am a knowledgeable man and it's <laughs> part of my knowledge. <laughs> You know, if I, if I knew how I knew everything I knew, <laughs> then I'd, I'd only be able to know half as much because it would all be clogged up with where I know it from. <laughs> so I, I cannot always cite my sources, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my lad. <laughs> yes, uh, there are other artists who do the same thing. Janet Jackson and Mary J. Blige um, also insist on having their toilet seats removed. <laughs> so what, uh, what are you veering towards? Um, well, it's, that's pretty I true. Think it's feasible. It's, it's, yeah. it's feasible. I I'm just worried about these stars with huge warehouses full of old Lucy. <laughs> oh. I don't know why I'm worried about them. I, no, I should, there's no reason why I should give a <laughs> shit whether they live or die. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's not doing it, is she? She's not got the spanner and re to putting her thing on. So someone else is coming in. She's totally yeah. unaware of it. Just gets done. One of those things. <laughs> hey, are you, Madonna, I, I want to get off early. Are you going to need to go again before the end of the gig, or, or can I remove it now? I know it's not. You know, you know, I want to. I want to get home before eleven if I can. So, will you need another shit tonight? <laughs> I mean, it's fine. I can wait. I can wait. <laughs> but maybe, maybe you could go now if you're ready. So, so you maybe therefore... it's not true. Yeah, go with your gut instinct. Okay, please. we say it's it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie, and it is indeed true. Um, <laughs> come on. Yep. Sorry. It is true. Uh, Madonna does have all her toilet seats removed from every concert venue to prevent them being sold on eBay. She also had all the decent songs removed from her last album to prevent them being. <laughs> Sold at HMV. Uh, please, team, uh, your teaser. Tony Blair proposed to Cherie in a bumper car. <laughs> to me, they look more like uh, roller coaster people, don't they? That's sort of like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's why her face is always like that. Well, yeah, yeah. That, that was the joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a visual. It was a visual. No. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm shit at time travel. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll tell you what, though, I'm shit at time travel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, true lie, neither or, of both. What do you think, Dom? Dare I say, poppycock, I think. <laughs> I think true. You think true? Yeah, yeah. Really? But you are team captain, Lee, so it's your word that is final. Well, I, I have to say that I'm slightly um, leaning towards John. Don't. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And I, I suspect that, actually, that that could be true mm. as well. And also it explains a lot as well, cos there's a massive metal bar at the front, isn't there? <laughs> well, I was going to say no, but no, I, I, might, I better say that. Cos I'm not going to get asked again. <laughs> um, that is the truth. The truth. So help me God. Right, OK, and I can Please. tell you that... It, Come on. It is indeed. Uh, complete rubbish. It's a... Oh. <laughs> uh, it's a lie. Tony Blair did not propose to Cherie in a bumper car. Uh, Cherie doesn't like going to fun fairs. Everyone thinks that if they throw three balls in her mouth, they win a foam Shrek. <laughs> Our next round goes by the grammatically challenged title of This Is Mine, in which Lee's team all claim to have a close connection to tonight's special guest person. Only one of them is telling the truth, and it's up to David's team to seek that person out and speak his name. So please welcome this week's special guest person, Mark. <laughs> uh, now, Lee, perhaps you'd like to explain how you know Mark. Well, this is Mark. Uh, hi, Mark. And, uh, <laughs> I, uh, don't say hello, you rude bugger. <laughs> I, uh, I actually employ Mark solely to manage my iPod. <laughs> You've changed. <laughs> John, what is Mark to you? I cut the ribbon at the opening of Mark's karaoke superstore. <laughs> and finally, Dom, what's your relationship with Mark? Well, Mark's a, um, a good mate of mine, and we used to be in a, a magical double act, and uh, we used to be called Mysterio and Mark. So... <laughs> that's, that's, 
Uh, so there you are, a professional iPod manager, according to Lee, a karaoke <laughs> shopkeeper, if you believe John, or a former magical partner of Dom's. <laughs> uh, David, time to interrogate the enemy. This double axe, yeah. what was it called again? Mysterio and Mark. So you chose Mysterio as a name and he chose... Yeah, and that's the reason why we uh, had to part separate ways in the end right. is just because he was just Mark and had to go. OK. And weren't you expelled from Magic Circle? Yes, I was. <laughs> for being a very naughty little wizard. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Lee... Uh, yes, David? When did you come to the point of realising that your iPod had just got on top of you and you... <laughs> and you needed to get in some help? No, I've got, I've got hundreds of albums, I bought the iPod. Oh, now I don't know anything about computers, so... Uh... It, it strikes me that an iPod is a machine for putting music on itself, right? <laughs> you already have a machine for doing that, and you're paying a person to work that machine. <laughs> you, I mean, do you use your own toaster, or do you also <laughs> subcontract that? So, so do, I don't know, I mean, I know nothing about electricity, and, I, you know, I, so I just give him the bread, <laughs> and I tell him where the toaster is, and some sort of miracle happens, <laughs> and it's just a lot quicker that. Way. It's all right for you with your private education. I don't understand <laughs> the basic no, principles. They did not, you know, my top posh boy, I'm speaking. <laughs> I'm telling you now that I, un I understand the concept of getting it from the machine to the iPod. If I'm going to be honest, I don't know how you get it onto the computer in the first place. Right. Okay. Unless you put the CD well, in, which takes forever. But in the CD in does not take forever. How does it get from the computer onto the iPod? Down a wire. I mean, you don't have to stand over it. The computer will just sort uh, of do it. For... I'm a control freak. <laughs> I know. No, no, no. I know. If you're a control I know what's going to happen. If you're a control freak, why are you letting someone else do this? <laughs> if you're so... <laughs> David, 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 David! David. Furthermore, it's a good if, question. furthermore, if I can ask you to shut up this time, you... you... <laughs> so you didn't have the guts to say you're working class piece of scum? <laughs> It's funny, is it? I, I actually didn't have the time to get it out <laughs> because you'd already interrupted. <laughs> David, so, David, before you get so, too angry, it no, is possible but, that he's lying. Okay. That is the case for Lee. Yeah. So yeah. We have one more. It'll be what? John, yeah. uh, who claims that he's uh, a karaoke shopkeeper. What is a karaoke shop? <laughs> a shop that sells karaoke stuff. John, how much were you paid? How much was I paid? Yes. You didn't do it for charity, let's face it. <laughs> well, actually, I did, because I felt like giving back to the community. <laughs> yeah. what, what did you take in from the community? <laughs> <laughs> and also, that's not for... Doing it for free for a karaoke store isn't doing it for charity. That's actually doing it for a karaoke store. <laughs> I don't think much comic relief money goes to karaoke stores. <laughs> We've got to keep getting the karaoke out there. It's so different. The overheads are vast. What so is it, this is like a high street store where someone who's just wandering past, getting some vegetables, maybe a book at Waterstones, or maybe I'll fit out a karaoke bar. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's in an industrial uh, estate, not on the high street. Whereabouts? The, I, I don't know the exact location. Oh, you lying bastard! <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you just love a Doctor Who villain to talk like that to you? <laughs> oh, you lying bastard! <laughs> a decision. So David's team is this man, Lee's labour-saving iPod technician, John's karaoke aficionado, or Dom's illusionist cohort. Well, I mean, the th thing is, Dom, I know, Dom is a magician, you. so it's a very plausible yeah. story that he was in a magician double act. If the iPod thing is true, then you're not the man I thought you were, Lee. <laughs> and, you know, that's the price you'll pay for this petty victory. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm, I think I'm with you. I think it's, it's Dom I'll at the moment. I'll go with that, I'll yeah. go with that. OK, you're saying it's Dom. Yeah. Uh, Mark, perhaps you'd like to reveal your own identity. John Diddle, my karaoke superstore. Yes, indeed. Thanks for that. <laughs> Thanks very much and well done to Mark. Our next round right. is Telly Tales, in which we revisit one of our national televisual treasures, and David's team astound us with an additional related fact. Tonight, the subject of our scrutiny is EastEnders, so let's just remind ourselves what it was like living in the world of the common people. You cow! <laughs> 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 I'll come down here and give you a dry slap. You slut. You want another one? 
No, I don't think so. Shut up! I'm not 70! I don't like your earrings. <laughs> Stand out of cupboards, are you? How dare you! A host of familiar faces from the past being punched, slapped and nutted. <laughs> of course, many people consider the golden period of the show to be about 8 o'clock when it ends. <laughs> Uh, so, Paddy's fascinating fact is after this piece of beautifully understated dialogue. Hey! Hey! I'm sorry! I love you! I love you! <laughs> So, uh, what is uh, Paddy's intriguing piece of uh, Pat Butcher <laughs> trivia? Pam St. Clements is a member of the British Abseiling Association. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> and has abseiled down Mount Rushmore. <laughs> as true as I'm sat here. Uh, oh, well, who's Pat St. Clements? <laughs> I have no clue. She's the woman we just saw that looked like something from the creature from oh, the Blue Lagoon. <laughs> She plays Pat. Pat and EastEnders. Pat okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. I don't know her by her real name. Okay, well, you do now. British Abseiling Association. What the hell were the British Abseiling Association doing in the United States? Abseiling. Ab yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> She's quite a formidable woman, is Pat. That's a polite way of putting it. <laughs> oh, you're formidable. <laughs> well, I mean, she looks like she could abseil. I'll give her yeah. that. Really? Oh, I reckon she could do it without rope. Very quickly. <laughs> I think it's it's false. I think it's so so unlikely that it's likely. Does that make sense? Yeah, you think it's false? I think it's false, but go for true if you want to go for true, because you said you've never won. All right, hissy mother. All right. <laughs> All right, well, let's go with you, and no, you better no, be right. No, no, no. no, no, no. no. You, no. You've made Top it the head, head. you can lie on it. <laughs> I, I doubt it very much, but John's always right, so I think... I don't understand why we have to sit here and watch this shit. <laughs> <laughs> now, for God's sake, make your f***ing mind up. And did points of view get back to you? <laughs> um, I would say that the answer to that question is that it is indeed, going by John's answer, oh. false. OK, let's find out how correct you are, Paddy. Truth or baloney? It's a lie! Yeah. Yeah. John was right. Yes, uh, Paddy was in fact uh, lying. Pam St. Clement is not a member of the British Abseiling Association and has not abseiled down Mount Rushmore, although she did mount the north face of Frank Butcher. <laughs> um, <laughs> that made me want to um, the end of that round, it's uh, David's team who are preparing for the worst, trailing as they do 7 3. And so to our final quickfire round, more truths and lies, this time against the clock, starting now. <coughs> Faye. Oh. Me. When we were first dating, I collected my husband's belly button fluff. <laughs> Can I just say, if this is true, I'm not comfortable being this close to you. <laughs> <laughs> How much did you get of this stuff? Um... What are we talking, tea cosy quilt? I mean, what? <laughs> I'd say... In excess of 50 examples. It might sound like a ridiculous question, but why? <laughs> um, because I felt that... Oh, and one, I needed a hobby. And two, <laughs> um, I was, uh, you know, just showing my love for him by collecting a part of him. Well, it worked. He proposed. <laughs> he did? Yeah. Yes. There you go. And, and what happened the night he proposed? I ate it. <laughs> I was, I was absolutely buying this, right up until it. the eating it. I'm with you on that. I'd say false. I believed it up until the eating. Yeah. What he said and what you said. What you both said. False. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so, is it fact or fantasy? I'm sorry, it's true. Oh! <laughs> oh. Oh. 
It is true. Faye did collect her husband's belly button fluff uh, when they were first dating, which makes her one of the most romantic, obsessive, compulsive psychopaths <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Lee. In a restaurant in China, I unwittingly ordered and ate dog. When did you find out that it was dog? When I bit into it and said to the waiter, what is this? And she said something which apparently means, I'm sorry I don't speak English, but then I asked somebody else who was with me, who spoke Chinese, and they said the Chinese for, what is this? Yeah. To which she said something in Chinese, <laughs> to which he interpreted, <laughs> got back to me, yeah. and said, dog. Dog. <laughs> What did you think it was? Well, I... To prawns. Be honest, I, you I, thought, I... These, this prawn's massive. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a collar. <laughs> you... Rover, Why funny you... name for a prawn. <laughs> what did you have with it? It was, it was on a bed of rice and it was yeah. with a, a small bottle of beer. <laughs> on a bed of rice with a squeaky ball. Yeah. On. <laughs> so, David's team is lead to be believed. I think it's true. We think it's true. Okay. You're saying it's true? Yeah. OK. Uh, true or Lily? It is, in fact. A load of twaddle. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, it is a lie. Uh, Lee has not unwittingly ordered and eaten dog in a restaurant in China. In recent years, China has started to westernise its culinary tastes. In fact, one of the most popular TV programmes in China is the British cookery show, Crufts. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> Paddy. Yes. I have wrestled Andy McNabb for money. <laughs> Are we talking the same Andy McNabb that did uh, the SES, yes. piece of literature, Bravo 2-0? Yes. I was doing a corporate for the army in North Yorkshire for the people who uh, learned to drive the tanks and all this carry-on. And uh, we all had a drink after in the officer's mess and it just happened. What do you mean for money, Wrestling. though? Where's the bit of money coming to all this? Well, they were all just putting the money down. It's just a bit of fun. <laughs> so who won? McNabb. <laughs> so, got, yeah, how did he beat you, then? What, give me the move that he beat you in. Just sort of... Can we show you down there? No. Go on. Go on. Go on. I'll volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you. Go on. Get down there. <laughs> so, you, you get yourself down on the floor, there. <laughs> how, how would you like... <laughs> get yourself on your side. On yeah. your side, <laughs> there. He had me in the scissors. <laughs> Not this. <laughs> Ask him, ref! Ask him, ref! Ask him! <laughs> <laughs> and that was more or less it. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's your uh, decision then? I don't know. I sort of. I, I imagine Paddy doing that. I can imagine him sort of going. We don't need to. You saw it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, what do you think, Dom? If, if you're going to get booked for a, a, a corporate event uh, with the army, it'll be someone like Paddy, so I reckon it's true. I'm going to say <laughs> false. You're going to say false? Yeah, so you're going to have to decide. OK. Um, I would say that, that, yeah, I think that's true. You think it's true? Yeah. OK. They say it's true. It is a lie. <laughs> Which uh, irksome sound uh, means at the end of our final round, it's uh, Lee's team, who are tonight's Supremos, having trounced David's team 10 6. <laughs> so, Lee's team get our congratulations, David's team get their coats. Uh, join us again <laughs> soon for some more facts and fabrications. And remember, as American writer Mark Twain once said, of all the creatures, man is the only one that lies. To which his parrot instantly replied, bollocks. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>